Welcome to another Six Patterns Diagnostic Video, educational, educational. At, its, at its core and its root. Uh, we're here to help you manage your lung biopsy cases. Uh, we're actually in the middle of a, 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 a whole segment that we're doing on Six Patterns, and this is called the Top 25 Pearls in Pulmonary Pathology that will change the way you practice pathology. And today we're going to talk about a, one of six topics. We're in topic five right now. And this is pearl number two. Of topic five. Topic five. I'm Kevin. And I'm Max. And topic five has to do with the approach to non-adenal carcinoma thoracic neoplasms. So we have a 50-something year old male. Yep. With an extensive smoking history. Like 80 pack year 80 smoking pack year smoking history and a five centimeter lung mass that's a large lung mass it's a large lung mass and it looks like they've done a needle core biopsy and so it definitely doesn't look like normal lung here so i'm thinking it's going to be slam dunk we'll be able to make a diagnosis it's right. probably going to be small cell or non-small cell carcinoma and yep. we can move on from that yep. yep so let's take a peek Looks a little bluer than pink, doesn't it? Even though there's pink necrosis yeah, in there. Yeah, there's pink necrosis, but it's a little bluer than pink. And I think, you know, right away we're seeing... Uh, Very cellular. A highly malignant cellular, yeah. malignant appearing tumor. High so NC ratios. Go to high power here. There's pleomorphism. Mitosis. There's irregularity. There's mitosis. There's necrosis. I mean, this is looking really ugly. Yeah. It, cells look a little funny, too. They're epithelioid. Yep, they're, they're but, rounded up and epithelioid. But, they have some generous amounts of cytoplasm. And they're almost eccentric in some places. Yeah, funny, right? Like almost looks like a, like a plasma cell in some areas. Like look at these guys. Right. Wow. So some people in the kidney call that a rhabdoid morphology. Rhabdoid morphology. Right. Like a rhabdomyoblast. Like a rhabdomyoblast. Interesting. There's some more necrosis. So we've got this high-grade tumor with necrosis. It's got a little bit of funny rhabdoid appearance, but, oh, look at the rhabdoid appearance here. Wow. So this should be a fairly straightforward case for us to resolve because today we, we turn to immunohistochemistry at the, at the drop of a hat. Right. And, and so uh, we're thinking it's non-small cell. So right. we've already made the diagnosis of non-small cell. Too much cell. cytoplasm. Too much cytoplasm. And we go to the WHO book and it says, well, if it's non-small cell and it's not forming glands, and it's not making mucin, and it doesn't have keratin, and it doesn't have intracellular bridges, all of which are absent here, then we're supposed to do immuno. Right. So the recommendations are just to start with two immuno. Right. So we do a TTF1 and a P40. Two interesting stains because they're both nuclear. Both nuclear stains. We've gravitated in pathology towards stains that have characteristic and distinctive uh, distribution in cells and right. the nuclear staining of these markers is extremely helpful especially in the marginally preserved yep. or marginally sampled yep. tumor it's wonderful i'd much prefer a nuclear stain than a cytoplasmic stain yeah. so we got the uh, both of those stains on this case p40 ttf1 they both showed very focal patchy nuclear reactivity but most of it was negative most of it was negative so if you're a most of it versus focal type person, you might say, well, most of it being negative, I'm not going down the path of calling this uh, a lung adenocarcinoma or a lung squamous carcinoma. Right. So what do we do now? I think one of the things that I would do next with this particular case is to consider getting a keratin stain. Yeah, I Because it, it's got some funny morphology. And it's showing a little bit of weak expression for TTF1 and P40. Just get a keratin stain, make sure we're dealing with a carcinoma. Anything else we might think of just looking at that morphology? Well, there's a bunch of other things you might think of looking at that morphology. That's not carcinoma, that's not... Melanoma would be... A melanotic probably, melanoma. Probably Could at be the top rhabdoid. of the differential. Yep, yep. Angiosarcoma. Yep, it's not very bloody, but, you know, they can, they can have that rhabdoid. Epithelioid sarcoma. Epithelioid sarcoma. Uh, what else? Well, there's some there's some unusual tumors. How about like a rhabdoid tumor of the kidney? A metastatic rhabdoid metastatic tumor. Metastatic rhabdoid yep. kidney of the kidney. 
So, I mean, I think there there are things in the differential that aren't like crazy out there that you got to think about. Um, if you're the consultant on this case, you get this, you're at this point. So we got a keratin stain on this, yeah, right? And it showed some weak focal reactivity. Now, convincing, you, you believe those cells are expressing some cytokeratin. Yeah, believable. So maybe yep. it's a lymphoma. Focal. <laughs> With focal. Keratin cytokeratin positive. Reactivity. A aberrant cytokeratin positivity. Let's not go there. Let's right. not go down that path. No. So, um, so this is not an uncommon scenario in the consultation practice where you have a high-grade tumor. It's showing an indistinct immunophenotype. Uh, and... and that Not, nothing comes up and, and nothing comes up and convincing so, right. con convincingly and so the the pearl really that we wanted to talk about here with this particular case is that some cases are challenging and insoluble mm -hmm. and you're left with making a diagnosis of poorly uh, uh, poorly differentiated high grade malignant neoplasm with an indistinct immunophenotype that happens probably more often than you would think. Especially in the consult practice, because it's already gone by a whole bunch of other eyes have looked at it by the time we get it. Exactly. So why don't you just sign this case out that way? Well, because in our experience, there's a couple of different high-grade malignant tumors that occur in the thorax that you should think about before you go down that road yeah. uh, and sign it out. And this particular case has some morphologic features that... that lead me to believe that it may be one of these unusual and rare tumors. Thoracic tumors. Thoracic tumors. Adenocarcinoma. Exactly. So what we're talking about here for this case is a SMARC A4 uh, thoracic neoplasm. Some wow. people refer to it as a sarcoma. Some people refer to it as a carcinoma. It shows an unusual immunophenotype in that it expresses a little bit of keratin. It expresses a little bit of CD34. It shows preservation of INI1 and loss of BRG1 by immunohistochemistry. Cool. So you probably did those stains. So we did those stains. We had a typical staining pattern for SMARC A4 deficient neoplasm of the thorax. Now, you might say, well, what does that mean? I mean, this is a high-grade tumor. The patient will probably die from this tumor. But the reality is, is that there are early clinical trials aimed at this SMARC A4 abnormality in these in these um, in these tumors, so oh. it can be useful to identify. Um, yeah, I think that's an important point because if you have unusual tumors that you don't normally think of, it's interesting how often the clinicians have actually figured out ways to target some of these. Exactly, like SMART. So in this case, you did the stains and it lined up perfectly, so you're ready to sign it out. Is there anything else? that you would have done up front to, to rule out any other tumors in this category? Like how about a nut carcinoma? So a, a nut carcinoma is another great uh, idea. Um, usually with nut carcinomas, you have these very peculiar histologic findings where there is a high-grade malignant neoplasm like we see here, no rhabdoid morphology, but then you'll see this abrupt little pearl of squamous differentiation. And nut carcinomas, you have to be particularly careful because they will express P40, like a squamous cell carcinoma. So both of these tumors, they're important tumors. They have distinct clinical uh, clinical presentations. Nuts, nut carcinomas are usually midline. They're used highly to be called midline lethal, lethal neoplasm. Tumor. Neoplasm I can't, or carcinoma? Can't, maybe carcinoma. Maybe carcinoma. Yeah, it looks to me always like a small cell. You're thinking small cell, and then bam, you find and, and these abrupt little foci of keratinized cells. Exactly. So uh, these two tumors, these are the two tumors we want to highlight for you guys right. as far as non-adenocarcinoma thoracic neoplasms. And again, it oftentimes you get a needle core, and it's indistinct. And so the pearl is some cases are insoluble, and you have to sign them out as high-grade malignant neoplasm with an indistinct immunophenotype. But if you see rhabdoid morphology, consider SMARC A4 tumors. And in that case, you want to get a keratin and a CD34. And if they're co-expression keratin and CD34, then you want to go ahead with INI1 and BRG1 immunohistochemistry. And if it looks like small cell, but there's focal keratinization? 
then you want to go ahead and get a nut immunohistochemical stain, which shows nice little speckled immunohistochemical reactivity within the nuclei, and that can confirm the diagnosis of nut Great. carcinoma. Cool. Now you guys will be the smartest kids on the block when you think of it. When you think of it. And it doesn't hurt to get an S100 while you're cutting sections. Great. Thanks, right. Max. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to like and comment below. See you next time.